Hi, I'm Alan from Bay Lily Bell Tents, and in this video, we're going to show you how to put up one of our bell tents. So, you need gloves to keep your hands nice and clean for when you do the bedding, some poles, some pegs, a hammer comes in handy, and of course, a tent. And we are rocking a sandstone five meter here, one of our standards. Okay, ignore my bottom. Right, so always roll the tent out flat. What we do, we lay it out like this because it allows us to see how much space it's going to take up when putting in a bell tent village. Because if someone wants 10 to 15 tents, it's good to work out how much space that's going to take. Um, we normally leave about 10 of your feet uh, in between, uh, feet paces in between each edge as we're putting all the tents out. I'll try and impart some other little handy hints. Another handy hint is if it's raining, do not do this because the rain will just go straight through the ground sheet onto the, sorry, straight through the outer onto the ground sheet and then you'll end up mopping it all out. Anyway, we've laid our tent out. Pour pegs onto the bag, that way you don't lose them in deep grass. You take six pegs for the first bit. And we're gonna put six pegs in before we put the poles in. So you always do the pegs either side of the door first. So peg one there. And that allows you to help line it up off of any other tent you want to put in the row as well. So we do them. And then what we do, there's four windows on a bell tent. And then you do the peg after the first window. There. You give it a gentle yank out. That looks really hard, but I wasn't actually yanking it that hard. But you can see how far it's come out. And then you do the peg the other side after the window and you give it a gentle tug out. And this is the way we've worked out, gives you the smoothest, flattest ground sheet inside. So then the next peg goes in after the next window round, and then the last peg goes in there. And what we've done is we've gone across, and that allows a smooth uh, pulling it tight. So there should be no ridges inside when it's done. Then poles, I always pour the poles inside the tent door, that way they don't get wet and muddy and grassy when you put them in because when that dries all that mud and grass is just going to fall in the tent and be something else for us all to clean out. So connect the poles, see the ring there by my left hand? You didn't need to, that goes up um, in case anything needs to be hung off, we don't currently hang anything off of them. Taking my shoes off because once again keeping it clean inside means less cleaning inside and line the pole up with the center. After you've done that pole a couple of times, there will just be a natural ring where it goes. Take the rain cover off there, keep hold of that. Then that goes through the center hole. Push that up. I, what I do, I pull that pole in and basically flake it out behind me. Put the rain cover back on. That way you don't lose it. So you take it off and then you put it back on. Uh, put the pegs, uh, the poles in the... Um, into the ground sheet holders. There we go. So you put them in there and you tie uh, a, like a shoelace bow around. And you do that at all three points. So on each of the bottom of the poles, left and right, and then at the top where the rain cow goes. But that's to stop if there's any adverse weather um, them blowing out. And yes, it gets hot inside the tent. Next, now I've got my gloves off, I do all the stuff I don't want to have gloves on for. So now I go and untie all the guys. But pop this one in first. You noticed I also zipped the door up. So zip the door up, because when we do the guy, start pegging the guy lines out, it allows us to ensure it's not pulled too tight. Because if it's pulled too tight, that's when the stitching starts to go around the mesh doors. So now I undo all the guy lines, because my gloves are still off. nearly there. I think one was a bit tricky. There we go. We, we hank them in little slip knots, therefore it's in theory easier to undo, but a couple were just a bit tricky here. 
There we go. My gloves back on because I'm going to handle dirty pegs. And as I say, I like to keep my hands clean. So I get the rest of the ground sheet pegs. And then we just go round in a circle and just give it a gentle pull out and push the peg in. If you can push it in with your feet or hand, it does actually save quite a lot of time in the putting up of a tent. and you can never forget the one in the front of the door. Um, otherwise, what you'll find is the ground sheet will flap up and people will trip over it and everything. This peg also needs to be banged in flat. Um, it needs to be totally into the ground. Sometimes if I'm struggling to get a peg in just to grounds a bit hard or something like that, if you put your hand round the peg, and bang it in, it just supports the peg. Sorry, those two orange pegs, they're rock pegs. We keep a pair in each peg bag to be used for bunting. And now I've got the guy line pegs. I place these in as I go round, because I find putting them in with the guy ropes plus carrying them a bit of a faff. Um, so once again, I don't like doing this when the grass is long, but the benefit of having the ground sheet out is I can just drop the, the guy line peg by the eyelet that I've already put in, so I know where it'll be. So pull the metal slider down about a third, pop the peg through, ensuring the metal slider's upright, facing up, and then pop it in. I always do the first two um, guy lines either side of the door first, because with the door zipped up, it allows to help just uh, frame it and get them in the right angle. You'll notice if they're not in the right angle, because you'll see creases in the, the flange material overlapping. Also, guy lines, what you do, if you follow down from the top of the tent, there will be a stitch, a seam, all the way down to where the guy line is, one of the panels. So the guy line should go in line with that seam. So it should be one continuous line from the peak to the peg. So I find this, this works really quickly for me and uh, this ground's not the softest. So if you have a very soft ground, not too soft for the pegs to come out, but very soft, you, you know, you can be putting tents up in eight minutes, something like that. But uh, even this one was 10 or 11 minutes real time, which is not bad. So there we go. I was just following the stitching down, the seam down. So that's it. That's all the guy lines in. So then we're just going to give them all a bit of a tug. Uh, the front three, the, that main one and the one either side of the door, don't pull too tight. Actually, the one on the right, I've just eased up because it was a bit tight. But you're making sure the metal slider is the right way up, as you see here. The other thing, put the guy line in the crook of the peg because A, when you bang the peg in, uh, it stops the guy line getting muddy because otherwise if you bury it, it gets muddy. And B, it stops it getting stuck in the mud. So when you bang the peg in, and then obviously making sure the writing on the slider is facing up. And just give them, not too tight, you're not yanking it, just make sure they're nice and firm. The guy lines should twang. Then just pop round if you, if you haven't already done so, you can just pop round and make sure you bang some pegs in. Minimum they should be in is about three quarters, um, but sometimes we will make sure they're all the way in uh, to just ensure they've got maximum support. There's a few pegs I noticed as I was going round.
Um, hammer down, gloves off. We're just going to roll up the door, have a look inside, make sure the ground sheet looks neat and tidy. It does. The pole's in line, which it is. If you need to adjust the pole, just ease off the guy ropes um, because ultimately they're pulling the pole down. So if you ease off the tension on the guy ropes, you can adjust the pole if you need to. So that's it. We've rolled our doors up. Job done. Thank you very much.